Hello and welcome to another short one. You know, in the past, Blizzard's uh, headlines haven't been the nicest. It was like uh, Bobby Kotick getting a salary increase or um, Blizzard firing employees, uh, people hanging up Bill Cosby uh, pictures in hotel suits and so on. But uh, today we got something nice to talk about. And hopefully these kind of things stay in the past as well, you know, don't uh, come back. Um, Blizzard has uh, dropped a patch for Heroes of the Storm. Yesterday, in fact. Or on the 29th, depending on when you watch this. Um, the patch prior to that was on 1st of February. So we didn't have a patch for a little bit, but, you know, we got one. I'd say uh, it's not too bad. And um, before we hop into the notes, I want to tell you that in this format, I only want to give you like an idea of the patch, like talk about the stuff that caught my eye, uh, maybe the bullet points. <coughs> and then if you want to dive into a deeper detail or have a discussion, uh, feel free to, to join my Discord or drop by um, when I'm live streaming on Twitch. You can share your thoughts and start a discussion there. Um, but yeah, let's uh, with th with that in mind, let's uh, hop in. So as I said, we get a we get a, a balance patch actually, no content patch for the people that wonder. So these are only balance uh, changes, no new hero, no changes uh, to maps or any game mechanics. Uh, the list of heroes can be found here. Uh, I'll scroll through and. Um, let you know what I think, what might be important. Also, like from my point of view, I'm mostly focused on the heroes that are currently in the meta or maybe would step in or out because of the changes. Um, I can tell you though, there's nothing too drastic, no reworks. So, Anubarak, first on the list, gets a um, couple of talent buffs. Basically, Blizzard saying the Beetle build overall is a little bit too strong, so they try to buff. Uh, the rest of the kit. I think Anubrak is already in a very good space or spot, so giving him a few more options and talents is totally fine. Johanna gets a nerf. Um, the one that stands out to me, uh, not only the level 1 damage uh, reduce on her E, but the level 20 falling sword gets changed a little bit. It's going to be a lot harder to consistently get the resets, which uh, should encourage people to pick it less often maybe, or just play much better with it, I guess. Uh, so I like that one quite a bit actually. And Johanna obviously extremely strong right now, so seeing a, a small nerf is totally fine. Uh, Atanis, HP reduction, yeah, Atanis was uh, way too overpowered. Uh, we have to nerf him, there we go. Thrall gets uh, a minor HP buff and the change to his level 20. So my take on Thrall here is, according to Blizzard's stats, Thrall is overpowered. <laughs> and <laughs> because no one is uh, playing him extensively enough, they, uh, you know, they do like a small buff to, p to encourage people to pick the hero. And then they can see the true power. But I don't know, this seems a little bit odd. <laughs> sure. Varian, small buffs. Um... Actually, some baseline buffs, right? Keep in mind, baseline buffs are the, are the strongest you can you can give to a hero. Um, and um, basically, Blizzard says, please, people, pick more taunt and colossus smash. Oh, sure. Uh, uh, coming to the healers, Alexstrasza gets uh, some buffs. Alexstrasza is uh, not necessarily weak, but extremely niche. Blizzard is uh, trying to put her a little bit more into the meta. Uh, I don't know if this is the right approach because it's like mostly level 16 change, right? Like of course uh, this is actually it's gonna be nice for her on her Q. But uh, yeah, I, my point is I, I don't think it's gonna change too much. But who knows? Rega though. Rega currently first pick material, one of the best supports we got in the game. Most flexible at least gets a HP nerf and uh, probably a lot more important purge cooldown from 45 to 60 seconds that's a pretty big nerf um, keep in mind purge can be used aggressively and defensively you can cleanse uh, your teammate or 80% uh, slow I think 
the opponent. Um, so yeah, that's a pretty big nerf. They also nerf the talent, uh, the, sorry, the totem build a little bit. Level 1, 7 and 16 get nerfed, which is, I mean, kind of still the, the most potent build, but uh, I think this is the second time in a row they try to address that, so maybe we will see some changes. Uh, I don't know if Rega maintains as high as he is right now in the priority, but uh, yeah, definitely deserves some nerfs. White Mane gets some buffs. Uh, sadly, I never see White Mane, and I have uh, not enough understanding of White Mane either in terms of like support knowledge to tell you if this is gonna change anything. I can say though that um, she gets like. The mana cost reduction is really good for her. This one, the the armor reduction reduced, is really good for her. And I think on level seven, uh, this is the cleanse, I believe, is also a very strong change for her. But we will see. Same for Alex Straza, right? I don't know if uh, we'll see more of her. Uh, coming to the melee assassins, Alarak gets a buff. In fact, he gets a very interesting buff. Um, to his E build, and uh, back, back in my days, you know when HCC was a thing, <laughs> when we saw some Alarak, it was almost always E build, and it was a nightmare to play against. And actually, they buffed the E build, so I'm a bit worried. I have some nightmares from back in the day. We'll see. Uh, Range assassins, Cassia, auto attack uh, build gets buffed a bit. Charge Strikes, Martial Law, uh, Proxon Blinds, which if you look at the way Cassia's uh, talents work, absolutely makes sense that she can proc it on Blinds, uh, sure. Chromie, I know a lot of you are playing Aram's and uh, reading this sounds really good to me. Uh, slowing Sands in Aram because the map is so small, it sounds kind of toxic, so I think it's not bad that uh, it has been removed, but let me know what you think about it. Maybe it's not necessary. Um, Gul'dan. And uh, this is uh, interesting. I didn't expect any Gul'dan changes, but they do quite a bit in terms of talents. Uh, basically, they buff everything a little bit. Um, they make they make the talents that... I mean, people are pretty all over the place with Gul'dan talents, right? But my, my point is, um, if you go for the Suck build, uh, this has been buffed quite significantly recently over the over the course of time, and now they buff other talents as well. So um, what 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 comes to mind here is uh, consume soul at least for me, <coughs> up to three charges, less cooldown, so you can eat three minions now. <coughs> also on level 13, straight up buff to all defensive talents, be it spell armor, be it uh, dark bagan, the a HP increase or the health stone has a reduced cooldown. And on 16, also straight up buffs to his Q and his E. The E is already very, very strong. They make it a bit stronger and the Q uh, scales from 10% from to 12 per hit, which is also pretty significant, I have to say, because cool Q is very low cooldown. Uh, you hit you hit the front line all the time, kind of, with it. So, and, and keep in mind, Gul'dan is uh, one of the range carries that has potentially the strongest ultimate in the game with Horrify or one of the strongest, you know. So, uh, obviously his big weakness is no mobility, a pretty big hitbox, but more damage, a little bit more safer because of the level 13 tier. Maybe he comes back, I don't know. Uh, Sergeant Hammer, you know, I have a big smile on my face about that one. I like to see some Sergeant Hammer. Uh, actually, same treatment as Gul'dan. Throughout all talents, uh, some buffs, <coughs> Like nothing super crazy, but when I read this, I can see like, yeah, Sergeant Hammer is going to be better. Uh, is it enough? It's hard to say because Sergeant Hammer, the biggest problem is that a lot of the heroes these days that get picked or are high in meta are kind of um, not hard countering, but yeah, shitting a little bit on Sergeant Hammer. You know, it's, it's rough to play into. Um, all these things, they help you a bit. And maybe it's enough. Maybe it's enough to see some Sergeant Hammer again, because we haven't seen any Hammer plays recently. N nor, like, no Storm League or competitive. Um, yeah. Uh, and then, we have bug fixes. Usually this segment is very interesting, because, you know, uh, HOTS has a lot of bugs. Uh, this time it's pretty disappointing. There's nothing big, you know, like... 
I don't know, like Luna, like Lunara Cleanse on 13 now finally works on this or this. Or um, uh, there's there's a lot of bugs in this game, and uh, they've addressed something <laughs> very small with an advanced tooltip. I'm mean, sure. Um, but yeah, that's the patch notes, guys. Mm. I will share my thought on this. For me, the winner of this patch. Um, and, and that's not looking at the buffs, but for me, uh, Blaze not getting nerfed has to be a win for him, because he's very strong right now, a very high priority, both in Storm League and competitive play. Didn't get a nerf, so he remains there. In terms of buffs, I'm not sure, maybe... I don't know, there's a, there's a certain amount of heroes that get buffs, right? But in terms of nerfs, the biggest loser for me, I think, is Rega. Mm, and Johanna, I mean, both of them, right? Because given how high prio they are in Storm League uh, or in generally in the game right now, nerfing these two will have an impact on the meta. Uh, maybe they remain on the top though, who knows, but I think Rega got hit a bit harder than Johanna, in my opinion. Uh, I would like to know though, guys, what do you think? Is uh, What do you think about this patch? Is it too little? Is it too much? Did it take too long? And uh, who are your winners and uh, losers of this one? Thanks for watching once again and uh, see you next time.